Welcome, Warrior fans, to this week's edition of Warrior Weekly. I'm Lucas DeGarmo. Alongside me, Travis Whipple. And, Travis, the awards continue rolling in for Winona State University. Yeah, the most recent, Allie Glassbrenner and Kayla Gunmanson have been uh, named Scholastic All-Americans. Pretty great honor. And, uh, you know, Glassbrenner is a, a senior education major and Gunmanson is a freshman nursing major. And, you know, they just uh, do a tremendous job. Um, cross country, track and field, and they really do it the right way. They're good student athletes, and they also get involved in the community service, and that's why um, they've been praised with these high honors. NSIC Miles Brand also got All Academic with Distinction Award with a 3.75 GPA. Yeah, all Warrior Sports seem to just be dominating the classroom. Yeah, uh, this is a great award, a 3.75 GPA or higher. You have to be um, a graduating senior on track to graduate and you have to have exhausted all your eligibility. So it's pretty pretty outstanding to have um, 10 of those student athletes on our campus um, and we were the second highest in the NSIC. So you're exactly right. Continue to do it in the classroom but you know also you see it on the uh, during competition on the court etc um, and in the community that's where a lot of these awards are coming from. And then also a couple of Winona State uh, coach and a couple of players, I think, went out to Portland, Oregon for leadership. A great opportunity to go to a, a Division II leadership academy where they learn um, a lot about themselves as leaders and how to further engage in community service projects. And I believe coming out of this, um, the NSIC as a conference um, decided on a, an entire project for, for every institution in the conference. So pretty neat. Rochelle Dosh was our assistant volleyball coach who, who took the group out. And then Michelle Potter, a track and field student athlete, and Lewis Johnson, a, a football student athlete, went. And so great opportunity um, to further their leadership skills. Moving on now to Winona State University Gymnastics. The gymnastics team placed second in a three-team WEAC meet held at Hamlin University. You know, I think they they were pretty impressed with this effort. They got over the 180 mark, and in my opinion, they're really peaking here at the end of the year as, as they've got the WIAC championships coming up here um, shortly. But um, Anna Gleason led the way. She won the uneven parallel bars again, and she's, she's done a great job all season long. She really has, and Melissa Bod Bodwin tied the for second on the beam. Heather, Heather Rumeline also placed third in the all-around. Uh, just a lot of standout performers from Nona State Gymnastics. Next up for WSU Gymnastics is February 28th, as Travis mentioned, at the WIAC Championships in St. Peter, Minnesota at 3 p.m. Moving on now to Winona State basketball, starting with the women's team. They went 1-0 and on the weekend, uh, beating St. Cloud State to end the regular season. Uh, they finished this year with a 12-8 and NSIC record, 17-10 and overall. 75-55, uh, they defeated the Huskies, and it was really a great way to end the regular season. Great way to, to end it at home, uh, senior night and parent night, and so it was a fun atmosphere. And then, of course, the blackout breast cancer and the breast cancer awareness stuff that surrounded it. But... Uh, you know, they really played well. They, they got up 10 at the half, and they never really looked back. Um, Michelle McDonald really led the way, as she's done quite a few times this year with 18 points and 9 rebounds. So close again at, at another double-double, but, but not quite. You know, I, I, really, I really think this team's come a long ways, and, um, you know, they've got some work to do yet to get into the region. But I think if they, they win a game or two in the conference tournament here, uh, they'll have a great great chance and an opportunity for a young team to compete in the NCAA tournament. A great opportunity indeed. And Ma March 3rd, they will travel up to the University of Minnesota Duluth. 7 o'clock tip-off for that game. It will be heard. You can listen to it on 89.5 KQAL. Uh, and, you know, they already beat Duluth this year, so I think it's a game that, you know, they know the formula to beat the Bulldogs. It's obviously going to be a little different, this one up in Duluth. They were able to beat and edge out the Bulldogs here at McCollum Gymnasium. But like you said, a great opportunity for Nona State women's basketball team. Uh, next up, obviously, the Duluth game, and then the NSIC tournament. Uh, the, the culmination of the tournament will be this weekend, March 6th and 7th. Moving on now to Nona State men's basketball. They also won, went 1-0 and on the weekend, finished the regular season by beating St. Cloud State with a record of 13-7 and in the NSIC conference and 19-8 and overall. Puts them at fourth in the NSIC, so the Nona State men's team got the four seed. They will play the five seed University of Mary but touching on that game against St. Cloud State they won 80 to 69 the Warrior men did and it was really the best game they played all season but 
the downer of the, of the game, of course, is that star senior David Johnson went down with a left ankle injury, at, you know, in the first minute of the game. It's never never good, especially on senior night. And uh, David Johnson has given so much, you know, to the, to the men's basketball program over the last four years. Yeah, he's been absolutely tremendous, and you hate to see that out of any student athlete, much less a senior here at the end of the year. But um, I have a feeling we're going to see him back. You know, he's been around uh, rehabbing and, and doing some things. He's been able to participate minimally. So so I think there's a good shot. We'll, we'll see him again. And um, But I think it's just extremely important that they got the four seed. They can host uh, the first round of the NSIC tournament uh, against the University of Mary team, um, which I think if they win that one, they're probably a lock for the, the regional tournament. They come in this week, uh, six in the region. So they're in a great position right now. Just take care of business at home. And you mentioned I think this was their, their best game so far, complete game against St. Cloud. And they even got the free throws down this time, mm -hmm. 9 of 12 at the end of the game. And, and so they, they played a complete game, and they finished it off, which is important. Ben Fisher, another big game, 19 points, 3 assists, 2 rebounds, and a steal. He is the floor general for Winona State. Clayton Vetti, though, we've been talking all year, you know, coming back from that knee injury, hasn't been, you know, performing at least for a full 40 minutes. He's been getting in there, doing some good things. But against St. Cloud State, going against arguably the best big man in the NSIC Conference and Matt Schneck for St. Cloud State, Clayton Vetti tore it up, a double-double, 15 rebounds, 13 points he really played phenomenal played great and that a career high for him in rebounds and um, you know we mentioned it on our radio broadcast is that Winona State needed to go inside uh, you know they needed to make Matt Schneck work, Schneck work and um, Vetti did just that he also showed his range on, on a couple of threes but I really liked how he played inside he got in there he was physical and, and uh, really played well and CJ Erickson continues to do well as well, 14 points, and, and Joel Armstrong, 11 points, but had that huge dunk that I thought really got the crowd back into it. He did, and uh, Winona State men, of course, uh, host the first round of the NSIC Conference Tournament uh, March 3rd against the University of Mary. That game will be at 7 p.m. right here at McCowan Gymnasium, so come and pack the house just like you guys did uh, at, against St. Cloud State this past Saturday. And uh, tickets are on sale now at, w at TicketAlternative.com. That's TicketAlternative.com, and the NSIC IC tournament will then be the 6th and 7th after the host is decided on Wednesday. Moving on now to Winona State track and field. They place 5th with a 73.50 points at the NSIC conference indoor meet. You know, I caught up with uh, Coach Rabarczyk and, um, you know, he was he was pretty satisfied with, with the, the way they performed. Um, they were very close, actually, to having another individual champion uh, in the 400-meter dash, but was DQ'd for stepping on the line. But Rebecca Steer was the one warrior who came away with a conference championship in the shot put. She'll move on um, as she qualified for the NCAA championships. Um, they're still waiting. Uh, Wednesday, the, those results come out on who is actually in on the provisionally qualifying marks and times. And so they'll know more. Um, after this Wednesday, and, and they'll go from there. But um, good all-around performances. Caitlin Dine really did well again in the 55 dash, and Sinead Geider finished uh, second in the shot put. So some, some great efforts and some tremendous young talent. Next up for Winona State Track and Field, March 12th and 13th in the NCAA Indoor Championships in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Women's tennis now for Winona State. They ended up losing 4-5 to five to St. Mary's in just a crosstown rival game. Freshman Laura Lindstrom won her doubles and singles match. Yeah, Laura's really playing at a high level. And, um, you know, fortunately I was actually able to recruit Laura out of high school. I was the tennis coach last year. And, uh, you know, I, I saw some really great possibilities out of her. And as you mentioned, she won both of her matches, singles and doubles. She's a very versatile player that can do both. Um, Addie Adler also won her singles match, and Heather Pierce, the, the number one singles player on the team, uh, won 6-3, 6-4 in, in a very difficult match. St. Mary's has got a great number one. So all in all, pretty, uh, pretty good outing for them. You know, I think they would have liked to come out, obviously, with the 5-4 win, but it was very close and down to the wire. Next up for Winona State Women's Tennis will be March 7th in Hilton Head, South Carolina for five matches. Jealous uh, going down there. It's beautiful <laughs> down there. Uh, ne not, next up now for Winona State Baseball. They went 4-2 uh, this past weekend, of course, uh, against St. Cloud State a couple of weeks ago, 4-2 uh, and two overall, but then they won three of four games against Wayne State, who has won the NSIC Conference for six consecutive years. What a way to start out the season for Winona State Baseball. Outstanding way to start it out. And, you know, talking to some of the student athletes and Coach Polk, they, they were very excited about this. You know, I, I don't think... 
um, in the last several years, they, they've um, done this to Wayne State in such a way where uh, on the second day they actually swept them. Um, so they were very, uh, very happy with that, and they've got some actually some outstanding matchups coming up in Florida over spring break. Um, where they'll, they'll have a chance to play the defending national champions. And, and so some exciting uh, matchups for them. Um, they also get Mankato State down there too, so a, a critical game for them, I think, coming up. Tony Mueller at one point had pitched six innings with a one hitter. He retired 13 straight and 18 out of 20 hitters. The young talent on this team, uh, Tony, Mil Tony Mueller in particular, just an outstanding player for Winona State. They also had Ross Hollenbrand go 2-0 and as he pitched uh, two of great games at the Metrodome. It's a treat for those players to be able to play up at the Metrodome. And we were lucky enough to uh, launch uh, the Warrior Sports Network, WSN. Uh, Don Veith produced uh, everything up there. And uh, Matt Prink and myself were lucky enough to call that doubleheader on that Friday. And it, just an outstanding experience to be able to go up there uh, and, and call those games and to see Winona State baseball. That night, that day they split with Wayne State. And then the next day, the morning, of course, they, they swept Wayne State in that and winning three of four. But a great opportunity and the Warrior Sports Network I think uh, started with a bang. Yeah it was I actually got a ton of great feedback on the broadcast and the quality of video and things like that so we're going to continue to bring those to you. I think the other important thing to note is that right now fans can go on and get that on a podcast through iTunes and, and have it and watch that game and um, you mentioned it, the baseball team really performed as did the WSN crew. Next up for Winona State Baseball is March 9th at Winter Haven, Florida. They play the defending Division II national champion, so that'll be a real test for the Winona State Baseball team. Moving on now to softball. They haven't started their season yet, but March 5th, they will be down in Orlando, Florida for 12 games, so we wish the softball team the best of luck. And that will do it for Warrior Weekly this week. For Travis Whipple, I am Lucas DeGarmo. It's a great day to be a Warrior.